We are back again for round two. This time it's the first Friday of February, and it's non-farm payroll data time in just under 15 minutes. Had some good gains last time. All of our trades were winners. Got in on all seven currency pairs. Don't know if we'll see that again. This report has got pretty mixed forecasts. This one right here on MetaTrader is forecasting less 192,000. That would be a very weak losing that many jobs. The Dow forecast was to gain 150,000, but some people are saying it could be a very disappointing report. We saw a poor jobs report on Wednesday from the ADP report. That's January's data as well as this being January's data. So sometimes the ADP is a bit of a forerunner on the non-farm payrolls and that did not go good. But either way, the data to our trading is irrelevant. As you know, we're doing it purely on price structure, but we do like to know the results anyway. All of our seven price charts pulled up with the US dollar currency pair on each of them and every single one of these on the 15 minute chart. So now what we've got to do is wait for the release of the information and then wait another 15 minutes and start looking for that inside candle pattern. Hopefully our trading results can be a bit of a mirror of last month. Win, 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 and that's what we want to see. Here comes the volume. Here we go. It's going to hit. And instantly you start seeing the US dollar flying on some of these. But what a beat on the figure. Wow, employment rose by 467,000. What a beat. Good effort on the jobs front. There you see it feed through on MetaTrader. 467,000 against that forecast where a lot of people were shaky thinking it was going to come through negative. Puts the employment rate at 4%. Not too bad at all. And we can see the candles start to climb. So let's sit out for now. And eventually let's see if we get some inside candles. All right, so here's the close of our opening candle, and we have seen quite a push on the US dollar on all of these charts off the back of that jobs report. Obviously, some of them going down where the US dollar is the quote currency, and it will be going up on the ones where it is the base currency. But there was a bit of a pullback, which means we could see inside candles come on some of these. And it does look like we've got a few inside candles as we turn four o'clock, not on every chart. So we haven't got them on the New Zealand dollar, the euro, or the yen. But the other four charts, they are coming with inside candles, particularly if you look at the pound US dollar, what a small inside candle that is. I can't imagine that we won't get a signal from that at quarter past four. Let's mark out these charts so we know what we're aiming for. With these white lines, then we've marked out the highs and the lows of the inside candles from the four charts. And we're looking for a close outside of the channel. So for example, here on the US dollar, Canadian dollar, right down in the bottom left hand corner, you can see if price was closed where it is now, that would be a buy trade for us. It is above the high of the inside candle. Likewise, if you look at the Australian dollar, US dollar, this is our inside candle. At the moment, price outside the channel. If it closes like that, it will be a sell trade. Might get some signals at quarter past four then. The last chance to take the signals is still at five o'clock. If any of these charts aren't giving us signals by five o'clock, we will close them down. It does look as though we are going to get three entry signals. So let's go through them one by one as we roll over quarter past four, just to confirm those. We'll start with the US dollar Swiss franc. And we can see the close happened against the dollar, interestingly, despite the strong jobs report. So it has turned against the channel. Price coming back up already now. So this is why sometimes you want to be quick in. So we can see from the close of the last candle measured up there. We're going to call that 23 pips to the stop loss. Rounded up for a bit of this that's been going against us here. And so with a risk of 0.5% capital and 23 pips to the stop loss, you can see we are entering with 0.12 standard lots and we are selling off the market. And the stop loss with that extra push of price back up, it has ended up a bit above the high. We'll watch that. And there's the take profit. Certainly seems feasible as long as we don't get too much of a bounce against us here. Let's go to the next signal. And that was the Australian dollar. That's a buy signal. Again, it's against the US dollar. And so again, we can measure from the close to the lower that candle. We'll call that 21 pips. And so for this one, 0.14 standard lots and a buy trade. And same again. Let's go 210 and 210. Now we do want it to be just beneath the low, I would say. Let's just extend that a little bit. It's only a touch extra risk. And we'll go for 230 points on each of them. And that puts it beneath the low, at least of the opening candle. So that's quite nice. And finally, a pound US dollar. Again, same as the other two, it's going against the US dollar. We can get rid of that channel and measure out to beneath the low there, to that close there. And we'll call that 22 pips. And so a similar volume again, at this time is 0.13 standard loss, another buy trade. And once again, we can punch in that stop loss and take profit. Let's see where we get compared to the low. Again, it's a little tight just because we're not in at 15 minutes on the dot. It's few minutes past and so from where you measure into the low let's just extend that again a bit lower down 230 yeah that's not too bad so there we are in three trades they're all moving a little bit against us at the moment as i said it was a pretty strong jobs report so surprised to see the trade entry signals come against the us dollar 
haven't had the signal yet on the last remaining inside candle. That's the Canadian dollar. And we haven't had any new inside candles on the New Zealand dollar, euro, or Japanese yen yet. A couple more inside candles as we turn over half past four on the euro, US dollar, and the US dollar, Japanese yen. Still no signal on the CAD and still no inside candle on the New Zealand dollar. No extra signals at quarter to five, which means there is only one more period for us to be able to get signals for our remaining charts. All eyes on the euro, the yen, and the CAD at just over 14 minutes. Let's see if they can get there. And as five o'clock is about to roll over, we are set to get two more signals at the final bell. Let's close down the CAD and the New Zealand dollar. Those ones are gone. And let's zoom in on the euro US dollar for now. That's come with the sell signal. So we're measuring from that close there up to there. We're going to call that 43 pips. So it'd be 0.07 standard lots selling off the market. Interestingly, this one is going in favor of the US dollar. We're in the US dollar Swiss franc pair going the other way. These two pairs usually move quite close together. So this is a bit of cover, I suppose. As we punch in the stop loss and take profit, that's a bit better on the stop loss, just above the high there of the day. Plenty good. Well, not the high of the day, but the high of the session since the release of the NFP numbers. And finally, a US dollar, Japanese yen. Again, we're measuring from here all the way down. That is quite a stretch now at this stage. That is 45 pips, we're going to call that. 0.07 standard lots. Again, a bit of a smaller risk. And this is certainly acting as cover against those other trades that are going against us at the moment. Very interesting to see it play out like this. You can see the stop loss just down at the low there. We can get rid of this channel now. That is absolutely fine. And let's bring up our charts again. And now we are just down to five of them. Again, that was the New Zealand dollar and the Canadian dollar that didn't make it through. But five trades is plenty. Two in favor of the dollar, three against. So it'd be interesting to see how it goes. I think we're about to lose the stop loss here on the Australian dollar, US dollar pair. It is ticking incredibly close. I think this is going to be the first stop loss of quite a few this afternoon. Yeah, there it goes. So that is a loss on the Australian dollar, US dollar. We can see it there, $32.20 lost. And our other trades really not going well either. Every single trade is a loss at the moment. You would kind of expect to have some cover going either way. But at the moment, yeah, they are all losing. It is not looking good at all. Still a few hours left in the session, though. Just coming up to quarter to six. Let's see where it goes next. And it's a big run to the stop loss in the US dollar Swiss franc. There we go. Does take it. So that is loss number two for us. 29.16 on this one. Both those trades were going against the dollar. So not surprising that after we saw the Aussie US one go, the US dollar Swiss franc follows it. And I don't think the pound will be too far behind it either. You can see that's been floating right near the stop loss. Seven o'clock update, and it's a bit of bad news and a bit of good news. On the euro US dollar, price is sort of hurtling towards our stop loss. If we see many more green periods, it is going to get knocked out. On the good side of things, though, the great British pound US dollar, that got very close to the take profit, and it's promising because it might be able to get there again. Has pulled off over the last 30 minutes or so, but certainly that high does give us some encouragement that it could get to the take profit. US dollar, Japanese yen, not really much going on there. Has been steadily heading towards the stop loss, but no major moves from it. So not expecting it to hit the stop loss. I think it'll fizzle out over a long period of time. And we'll probably end up closing it at the end of day at 11 o'clock. There does go the third stop loss on the euro US dollar this time. We got in pretty near the bottom, basically right at the bottom. And that turned out to be a very bad trade. Every period apart from one has gone against us people buying the euro but that's not the worst of it the worst of it is if we look at the pound us dollar because meanwhile while we expect the euro us dollar to be going up we would also be expecting the pound us dollar to be going up but this has continued to trend downward we want it to go upward we were very close to the take profit but down those candles come and it is looking very grim right about now for this trading session nine o'clock update here not a lot going on with either of our remaining currency pairs pound yen ranging around a little bit in profit yen ranging around a little bit in loss you win some, you lose some. We've got two hours left in the day before we close these trades off manually. It does look like that's where it will be heading. Might still be able to get a take profit on the Great British Pound. You never know. But we can see volume has been fading away from the market. So those big moves are less likely to come. And we are more likely to see price ranges around this kind of time. It's hold out for these last two hours. Let's see how it finishes. As we are about to get to 11 o'clock, it is going to be tense as to whether we get any profit on this Pound US dollar. It did just dip into a loss. Now it's looking good like we are going to get a few cents from it. Let's wait for the rollover. There it is. And we can shut it off. And we shut off our US dollar Japanese yen trade as well. That one is for a loss. Let's take a look at the trades. That is all five of them for the day. You can see only one blue there. We did get 26 cents from that pound US dollar trade in the end. 
but really not a good session. I did think once we were in the trades, it would be a bit more balanced considering there was three trades in one direction against the dollar and two trades in favor. You expect either three losers and two winners or two losers and three winners, but sadly four losers, three of them complete losses, one of them about a third of a loss, of course the final one, making that little bit of profit back for us. This session hasn't cost our faith entirely in the strategy. We got a bit unlucky, I think. I mean, after the first 15 minutes, there really wasn't a lot of movement. You can see that was the move there. And then certainly on the Japanese yen, nothing but range then. Pulled back a bit, but really the vast majority of the session, not a lot going on. And same for the Great Bridge Pound. This is similar across the rest of the US dollar currencies as well. It just wasn't a job support that made a big move in one direction. So we ended up getting caught out. But unfortunately, as is $101.24 down from it. And we'll be back again to trade this one. Let's just have a look at those trades in the journal for now. A beautiful journal. Well, it certainly looked beautiful last month. Not so much this month. Let's scroll down to the trades we took. And you see them there. Four reds, one little green one at that 26 center on the pound US dollar. Giving us a little bit of hope there. Balance down to $70.72. We did lose around about $100 trading today. So a bit disappointing from there, but we know it can do well. We know it can make a comeback. Potentially next month we can get seven green trades again. That's what we want and that's what we're after. You just didn't get a price push in one direction. It was very back and forth and our signals got us in right at the edge in a lot of them. So not a good trading session, but still five trades out of it, giving us a six trade average per session. Seven last time, five this time. So we can reasonably expect another six trades when we trade this again. We'll be back.